and you cannot go in there and just vote party loyal. You need to know who the candidates are this time. It is crucial because the revolution really is going to start at the voting booths in 2010. You really, it, it's, it could change the direction of our country, and it's really at this point our, 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 our hope right now. Absolutely. Uh, we actually have you for about five more minutes before Adam comes on. And so I want to ask you some other things. Like, what was it like meeting uh, Aaron Russo? Oh, you know what? It was, first of all, I, before I, I was in politics, I worked in the entertainment industry and, and I w worked in as an actress and I worked behind the scenes as, as a produce, as mm -hmm. producer. So um, I wanted to meet him for other reasons. <laughs> you know, I, I, I loved The Rose, I, I loved his film work. And um, so, but when I, I hadn't seen, at that point, I hadn't seen American Freedom to Fascism. I, I didn't know that part mm -hmm. of Aaron Russo. He was an absolutely fascinating, loving, giving, extraordinary man. Him and I clicked. I mean, we just clicked and we corresponded um, right up until he really got ill towards the end. But that meeting really, because I was with Art Olivier, who I was the campaign manager of, and it was really that meeting that helped with Art and Aaron to turn around and make me open my eyes and start connecting the dots. So I really owe Art and Aaron uh, quite a bit for the direction that mm -hmm. my politics have taken me. So mm -hmm. he was a great loss, great loss. Well, he's going to be remembered for a very long time. For those that haven't seen the documentary film, uh, America from Freedom to Fascism, you might want to go ahead and Google that. It is available to watch on free on the Internet for free. And uh, there are many other great films other than that one, but that, that film definitely was the, the film for a lot of people that didn't wake up to what was going on prior to the, that film's release. Yes, uh, I was one of them. And, and as a matter of fact, up until that film, I, I didn't even know who Ron Paul was. I, I, you know, I, don't, I didn't pay attention to congressmen in other states, so it really, it really educated me, and I started doing my research afterward, and, and I will say Art did continue to steer me in the right, right direction, so thank you, Art Olivier. Um, I just, you know, we have to be libertarian-minded, constitutional-minded individuals, and, you know, the Founding Fathers never established us to have a Federal Reserve System. They didn't establish us to even have a party system. George Washington was opposed to a party system. And don't let anybody tell you that we started out as a two-party system because we did not. As a matter of fact, when parties started to form, there were several. If you look at the party affiliations of the first 15 presidents, they all vary. And it wasn't until our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, that the Republican Party um, started to take foot in the country. So it, it's, people really sh need to know history instead of what they learn in the public indoctrination system. Mm -hmm. Now, going across the party lines, are there any names you want to drop in terms of people that you trust that are in Congress? Uh, some, I mean, that we know about Ron Paul. Cynthia McKinney used to be in office, unfortunately not any longer. Uh, what are some names you'd like to drop for some people that are listening that we might want to check out? Right now, <laughs> Ron Paul is the one I follow the most. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I like the candidates that are out there better, like I, like Adam Koresh. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm a huge fan of of Adam and P Peter Schiff and and more liberty minded individuals. Um, uh, you know, during the last presidential election, besides Ron Ron Paul, I did end up voting for Chuck Baldwin. Most of the people that I follow and I like really aren't sitting up. There in, in the you know in Washington D.C. Um, well, Chuck Baldwin. I mean, he definitely is addressing some serious issues. He wrote recently in an editorial: uh, okay. Is Obama preparing to deploy a million troops to the United States? And so yes. he's talking about some of these preparations being made, asking the big question: Hey, you know what's being planned here? Especially when the MIAC report targeted Baldwin as well as Aaron Russo uh, yes. supporters and uh, Ron Paul. Yes, I encourage uh, your listeners to Google Chuck Baldwin, get on his email list, and read what he writes. He's a very wise man, a uh, very humble man. He knows what he's talking about. And um, the, anyway, those are the people that I like. I also uh, like Liberty Candidates 2010, uh, Gigi Bowman. Um, she's done a great job of, of doing her research on candidates and putting candidates together. Yeah. So go look at that list. I, I'm a supporter of Rand Paul. Mm -hmm. um, so, Who, and then so, we'll talk about him. He is he is the son of Ron Paul, yes. and he's also running for office. So there. Yes. Okay.
And, and, yeah. and is that also in Texas, or what state is that in where he's running? No, he's running in Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely, that's all very important information. I want to ask your opinion on one thing. So say you're elected governor, let's hope you are, but at the very least we're getting the information out there for people that are pessimistic, Absolutely. thinking that the independents can't win. It's about getting the issues out there on the table so we can talk about it. But say this situation, and I don't think it's going to get better, our economy, job losses, yeah. say it continues to spiral out of control. Where do people go when they don't have a home? In an ideal system, if, if we were in charge of our own government, how would we manage this problem that's coming uh, like a train straight out of hell in our direction? Well, if we do, well, if I do, are you asking if I do win or if I lose? Because if I... If well, let's just I, say you win and we have our way and we're going to go ahead and try to do something about this growing homeless first problem. First of all, we have to get the federal government. First of all, I'm, I'm for ending the Fed. We, mm. I do not want this state, the state of California, to have any affiliation with the federal government. Um, you know, I'm looking into a centralized state bank. Um, I, you know, just became aware of Ellen Brown via Dr. Stanley Monteith. Oh, who, she's great. Oh, yeah. So I am. I have it, her DVD. I am going to watch that and, and have a conversation with her, but I am looking towards that, and I want to thank Dr. Monteith for, uh, you know, putting me on to her and her idea. That's what we need to do. We need to have state sovereignty. That is the only way that we as individuals are going to be able to strengthen our economies is, is by being just state, you know, uh, running ourselves. And going back to, again, the Founding Fathers, they were, they were all landowners and had their own businesses. Mm -hmm. It was not corporatism. It was capitalism, and that's right. what we need to get back to. Um, so, you know, in, in the, the, you know, hiring, ta you know, taxes need to be lowered. It is a fallacy. They, you know, the, the, the socialism has taught us throughout these decades that hiring taxes helps, no, lowering taxes helps. It stimulates the economy. It's the other way around. So these are some of the ideas that I have. And uh, But state sovereignty is it has to come first. Uh, so um, if I don't win, um, like many others, it's time to go to the mountains, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and be self-sufficient because it, it is going to get worse. If liberty-minded candidates don't win in 2010 and 2012, I, you know, I, I really shudder to think what it's going to be like four years from mm -hmm. now. Well, I pray that people watching this show that are addicted to the fake left-right paradigm check out your website and uh, take a look at some of the issues that you're raising and uh, take a look at some other candidates that we can also look at locally. Maybe some more people that are watching this show should run for office yes. so we can actually make a difference. Yes, I ask people all the time to run for office. Every time I'm at an event, it's, you know, part of my spiel. You know, each of you need to run for office. And here's another thing, because people say, well, you've never, you've never been in office. Well, no, I haven't. That's the way it was designed. We were not supposed to elect career politicians. So don't listen to the propaganda that you must be experienced. No, you do not. You just need to be an American who believes in the Constitution. And as far as a governor, a governor it gets to appoint a cabinet of about 400 people. So you get to surround yourself with experts in their field. The important thing is, is that you get a candidate in office that shares your viewpoint and, and has a love of the Constitution. Because if you can do that, then they're going to surround the, themselves with experts who, who can help in the areas that you are, you are weekend so exactly. the most important thing is to, to vote for liberty and and to not be party loyal I cannot stress that enough now you have the website nightingale for governor dot com uh, before I let you go here in a moment any other websites you want to plug also so we can get more information uh, nightingale for governor dot com I also want to uh, plug I believe it's, she just has a Facebook I'm not sure there's a, a, an actual website and there's just mm. a meetup group for it too and that's liberty candidates 2010 um, I, I definitely agree with that. I agree with the Tenth Amendment Center. Um, I don't have their links in front of me, I'm afraid, but um, I, I support those. Here in California, I support uh, CCIR and San Diego Minutemen. Um, and I also, I'm, I'm one of those people that uh, supports the American Grand Jury. So those are, uh, Campaign for Liberty is, is a must. Um, those are those are the ones Campaign that I, I visit most frequently. Second, you know, I just um, uh, one of my supporters helps run a forum here, Open Carry. My friend Jeff Schwilk of San Diego Minutemen was one of the first people that I knew that 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 uh, was part of the Open Carry movement. So I very much support the Open Carry movement as well. So. Well, I thank you for coming on, Shailene, and I wish you the best of luck. I hope to hear Alex. some. I hope you see you on the mainstream media sometime soon, at least uh, getting your views and ideas out there. 
Thank you very much, Alex, and I appreciate this opportunity, and, and I like what I, I heard from you tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.